Is smaller possibly better for LEGO Star Wars? Let's find out. Hello everybody, the Brickologist here with another throwback LEGO Star Wars set review. Today we're going back 20 years into the past to 2003 to look at set number 4490, Republic Gunship Mini Building Set. This set used to retail for about $7 here in the US, adjusted for inflation that's closer to $12, contains 102 pieces, and here is a front look at your very nice blister pack box, and the back of the box showcases the combination model aspect of this set. More on that in a minute. I wanted to quickly examine the uniqueness of this box. I doubt LEGO will do anything like this in the future because it's mostly plastic, which isn't super environmentally friendly. However, I think this box is super fun. Firstly, you have a replica of a brick right here, which surprisingly has clutch power. I was not expecting that, but kind of pleasantly surprised. That is very cool. And basically the way this box opens is from the top it folds down like so the inside has a cardboard cutout that opens up like this and then your pieces are inside here so a very interesting fun and different lego box you get one rather small instruction manual with 22 pages of building and at the front there is a nice advertisement for all the other miniature sets from 2003 with a cgi yoda looking over them that's pretty fun however the best part is at the back of this manual showcasing the combination model. So if you get all four of these sets, you get one piece from each of them to build this miniature scale Y-Wing, and it does have instructions on how to put that respective part together. So you basically get the torso of the Y-Wing right here, which is not very impressive by itself, but when you get the other sets, it makes a lot more sense. It makes for a very cool combination model. This is the part of the review where I would normally introduce the minifigures of the set, but there are none here. So let's just look at the build. Before you, you have the miniature version Version of the LAAT, otherwise known as the Low Altitude Assault Transport. And LEGO has made this vehicle many times, but in 2003, this was just the second version coming off the tail of the 2002 version, which of course was minifig scale. For a mini model, this actually packs a lot of punch. The front here looks very solid. I like the use of this part right here in lime green, and the joysticks replicating the cannons was very clever. The slopes right here are definitely blocky, but that's to be expected in 2003. Some solid techniques are used to create the slope of the vehicle here, and I think it looks very solid. The cockpit area is designed pretty cleverly. I think that all looks really good. The main hangar doors here can't move, but they have a nice slope, and of course you have the iconic bubble turrets right here that can move inside and out just a little bit. Now, unfortunately, they use an opaque gray R2-D2 head with no printing. First off, would have been really cool to print this part. Second off, this should have been some sort of transparent color. It looks very distracting to me in opaque gray. The same exact issue follows onto the wings as well exact same part definitely a big miss in my opinion however that's not nearly the biggest issue with these wings to accomplish the unique shape of the wings lego used some technic pieces to get the specific angle and basically when you're just glancing at it it looks pretty good however if you pick this thing up you can see the wings here start to wobble up and down. Additionally, they can spin like this, so it is very easy to just hit this thing and all of a sudden your wings are completely out of whack, so that's not a great design. However, the shaping of the wings is very solid. I think the cannons up here look pretty good, and there's also an additional cannon from the back using another joystick piece, so that's all fine and dandy. However, I can't get over how loosely attached the wings actually are. So is smaller better for the Republic gunship? Absolutely not. I don't think anybody in their right mind is going to choose this miniature scale model over the minifigure scale version, especially this one's counterpart from 2002. That being said, I think this little set has its own merits. 
The design, especially for the time period, is actually pretty good. I pointed out my flaws throughout this review, but it's instantly recognizable and it's proportioned fairly well, which is impressive given the scale. The price is pretty hard to beat. $7 back in the day, I mean, come on. We don't get anything that cheap from LEGO Star Wars besides like poly bags these days. And even adjusted for inflation, around $12 doesn't feel bad at all for the piece count. And it's even cooler when you know that you can actually build the combination model if you collect the complete set. Here is a quick size comparison next to the Ahsoka Clone Troopers Battle Pack from earlier this summer. As you can see, this $7 set in 2003 is a bigger build than a $20 set in 2023. Obviously, the Battle Pack includes minifigures, which makes a huge difference, but it's still an interesting thing. Additionally, if you want to get this set on aftermarkets, go for it. It's only about $25 brand new. So if you like what you see here, definitely purchase it. It's worth that amount of money. It is pretty inexpensive. So yeah. I like this. I like this a lot. It's not a perfect set by any means, but I think it's a fun, unique, different spin on an iconic LEGO Star Wars vehicle, and that's why this set is going to get a really solid rating of 7 out of 10. Those are my thoughts, though. Let you hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, while you're at it, please check the description to find me on all sorts of social media pages. Also, while you're at it, please like this video, subscribe to this channel, click that bell for more new video notifications. Thank you all so much for watching. This is the Brick just signing off. Peace out. God bless. Bye-bye.